Hello and welcome to uh, the Using Logger Pro to Write Equations for Linear Data screencast. Uh, in this uh, video, I'm going to show you how to open a new file in Logger Pro, enter data, uh, create a best fit line for data that's already linear, and then use a linear model to write an equation for that line. All right, so we're going to start off by opening Logger Pro. Uh, here's an icon on the desktop. And uh, when it opens, you're going to see that there's a data table on the left-hand side and then also a graph on the right. Um, so I already have a set of data that I plan on entering. You would be entering something like this by hand. I'm actually copying and pasting it from elsewhere. Uh, so there we go. And let's imagine this is data. Uh, the X column represents uh, time in seconds and the Y column represents position in meters. And uh, this is data from a, uh, an experiment with a battery-powered car traveling at a constant speed. Uh, so I'm actually going to first label what this data is. So on the X column on the left, I'm going to double-click X, and a new window is going to show up. Instead of X, uh, this is time, so I'm going to call it time. A short name would be a letter to represent time. A good letter for that would be either lowercase or uppercase T. I'm going to use uppercase T. And the units, this is measured in seconds. I could type in S or SEC. Uh, SEC is what I'm going to choose. And click Done. You'll notice once I do that, it's labeled it in two places. First, on the column uh, in the data set, but also if you look at the bottom of the graph, since that was the X column, it's already labeled uh, the X axis with those, the name of the variable and the units. Let's do the same thing for Y. In this case, I'm going to call it uh, Position. A short name for position could be the letter P. I'm going to choose the letter X to stand for the horizontal position of the object. And the units, this is in meters, so M. Okay, so, and you'll notice once we've done, done that, it also labels that on the Y axis as well. Uh, all right, so if we take a look at the data that's graphed here, uh, this looks fairly linear. We can actually resize or rescale the graph a few different ways. You'll notice it's only going up to like four is its maximum value. So I'm going to select the, the highest value on the y-axis. Instead of 10, I'm going to scale this up to five. And uh, 10 seconds looks pretty good on the y-axis. Uh, that's one way of doing it. You can also select the auto scale graph button on the top here, or even better is right click. So like auto scale and auto scale from zero. Uh, when you auto scale from zero, it will keep zero zero as uh, in the graph. If you just auto scale, it often cuts off the bottom part of your graph. This might look like it starts at zero, but it actually does not. So let's go right click, auto scale, auto scale from zero. All right, uh, so this looks fairly linear or like a straight line would fit it, but since it's real data, uh, when we draw a best fit line, we're going to notice that the line doesn't exactly go through all the data points. All data collected has uncertainty. Um, to draw a best fit line, we're going to select the linear fit button on the top. It has a little R equals symbol. And we're going to click that. And once we do that, it's going to give us a fit, or what's called a best fit line for our data. Uh, it also gives us some information about that line. So it calculated the slope already for us. Uh, 0.40 meters per second. Uh, since we entered in the units in our data table, it includes the unit in its calculation of slope. And the y-intercept is negative 0.02 meters. Um, there's two other values uh, that I'll just mention briefly. The correlation coefficient is a number between 0, or sorry, negative 1 and 1. And the closer it is to one, the better the fit, or the, the closer the data is to being uh, a straight line. Real data will not fall, will not give you an exact correlation of 1.0 because all data has uncertainty. Uh, the root mean square error uh, is a way of averaging how far each data point is away from the line. And so, for example, if this first data point was 0 0.002 meters away from the line, this might be 0 0.01 meter away from the line, 0 0.01 meter away from the line. Uh, this is a way of taking an average of how far those data parts are away, points are away from the line. Uh, in this case, on average, they're 0 0.03 meters above or below the line, on average. 
Uh, okay, the last step that I'm just going to mention is how to write an equation from this. So I'm actually going to use the Microsoft Word tools just to show you uh, how to write an equation. So uh, the general equation for a y line is y equals mx plus b. Uh, I'm going to replace every letter in that equation with an, a, letter that, a letter or numbers and values that it actually represents on the graph. So instead of y, I'm going to use the letter x to represent horizontal position. Uh, instead of m, I'm going to type in the slope from the graph. The slope was 0 0.40 meters per second. I'm going to round it there. Uh, instead of x, I'm going to use the letter t to represent time. And instead of b, I'm going to use the y-intercept, which in this case was negative 0 0.02 meters. I'm not sure why it gave me a plus or a minus. It should just be minus. There we go. All right, so that's an equation of how to use Logger Pro to help you write an equation uh, for linear data.